Hello and welcome to yet another app worldly experience. So far we have learned how to use native UI to create vehicles. We have created admin system. Now what we're going to learn is how to detect player input, like whichever key in the keyboard, you can detect the input of a player and then use that trigger to have some function invoked in your server side or in the client side. So let's get straight into it. First thing to detect any sort of an input from the player, you need to head to the client side. You need to do scripting in your client side, not your server side. So first thing, we'll head on our client side. And for my format, for my project, I have made another class called KeyPress. What this trigger, key input trigger will do is if a player who is an admin presses a certain key, let's say for this instant, the, uh, the button B, then if the player is inside a vehicle, the vehicle will get destroyed. So now there's one thing that I need to clear out first. Most people uh, give the advice to take the input in on tick event. I'd say don't use on tick event. One major reason is because it spams the beep out of it. Like if you even hit it once, the button only once, if you, even if you tap it, it's gonna call at least three to four times because it is on player tick. It's gonna happen very fast. So what I suggest is use timer. So let's start with the timer. For client side, the package that you need for a timer is using system the threading. And with this inside my class, which is inheriting the event script, I will create a timer and let's just call it T press. Now we will create the actual timer in our constructor for the class key press. So let me make a constructor and inside the constructor, I will actually create an object. The first parameter for timer class is the callback delegate, which should in which should be invoked when the timer has gone through the time limit, whatever you have given the time, obviously. So what I will use is on key press. Now the state, you can keep it null. For now, there is nothing required over there. You can keep it null. The due time is the first time for how long the timer should run before it invokes the function which you passed over here. So what I'll do is I'll give it 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, obviously. And then period is basically after once it has been invoked to the function, after that, after the first invocation, what is the period that should happen, which will continuously trigger that function. So I'll keep this as 1000 again, as in one second. Now, the next thing is we need to create the function, the callback on key press. So public void on key press. And the formal parameters for on key press is object state. Now, what we will check if the player is that if the player is pressing the key B or not, B for ball. So we'll check that if input dot is down and the key integer for the button b is 66 so what we are checking is if the player is hitting that button the button b now what we will check is if the player is inside any vehicle or not so if player the local player the vehicle not equals to no this means that if the player is inside a vehicle, then it will give any value except null. If the player is not inside a vehicle, then it will give the value null. So I'm going to use this. You can use if the player is any v in, uh, player dot local player dot is player in any vehicle. You can use that as well. But right now I'm going to use this. Now the next thing that I will use is I will store this value, the vehicle output, the return that I'll get inside a variable vehicle. So vehicle v is equals to player dot local player dot vehicle. 
Now the next thing what I'll do is I will call a server side event, a remote event, and then pass this vehicle variable to my server side. So events dot call remote and the name of the event for the server side that I'll give is uh, destroy v via input and the parameter that I'll pass is the variable v which stores the player's current variable this is what I'm passing now the next thing what I will do is I will dispose the timer that means I will destroy the timer why am I doing this I'll tell you in a moment but first let me dispose of it and then what I will do is I will give a delay so that let's say if a player hits the button and then again hits the button then neither the timer nor the event gets overlapped with each other so to sort of get around this to solve this issue what we are going is well what we are going to do is we are going to destroy the timer we are going to set a delay for one second and then we will again create a timer which will invoke this method in one second so now we need a task await or a delay for that we need a package using system dot threading dot task and if you need to use task dot delay which is an awaitable function the function which is inside of it it needs to be a sync and then over here I will do await task dot delay and for I'll delay it for 1000 millisecond which is a second and then lastly I will again create a new timer because over here we destroyed it it is disposed so we will again create another object which will store which will get stored in the variable t press and again the first parameter is the function that it will invoke and again it should be on key press I'll just copy this and paste it as it is over here now this is all for our client side for our server side we need to create a remote event which is completely matched with this one in our uh, client side so I'll copy this event name and then I'll go to my server side and I'll make a remote event so oops that was not supposed to happen remote event and paste now we need a callback function for this so public void destroy v via input the parameter for any remote event which gets called from the client side is that the first parameter needs to be of the client player that means which player from the client side is invoking this function so client player and the second argument or parameter needs to be whatever you are passing from your client side in my client side I'm passing the V of data type vehicle so that is what I'll invoke or rather I'll pass over here vehicle V now what we'll do is very simple we will send a notification to the player that they have destroyed it and we will destroy the vehicle but first what we are going to do is we are going to check if the player is an admin or not if you do not know how to make an admin system like how to detect if a player is a normal player or an admin I have made a video on that I'll share the link it should be I don't know somewhere click on it go through the entire video video it's very short and then come back three two one all right ready let's go so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to fetch our uh, defined user defined class which stores where is it which stores most of our data most of our extra data and one of the extra data is admin and then to define the admin like which sort of an admin is the player is we have used enumerator all of this is again done in the admin tutorial and if you don't know how to make a custom defined class for your player I have done a video on that as well I'll link it don't worry so we will use this method sorry member class member to determine if the player 
is an admin or not so back over here what we will do first is we will fetch the data fetch our sorry fetch our object the class object that we have stored in the player so to do that we will first do player dot data temp is equals to oops player dot data dot get data from client this is a custom function that i have made what it does is it takes the data type client and it returns the data type of player dot data so once it returns from here it will get stored in our variable temp so i'll pass the client variable which is player and it go it gets stored in our variable temp what we will do now is we will we are going to check if it's an admin or not so if temp dot admin is more than wait what i'll do is i'll check the negative one first is equals to equals to explicitly typecast it and let's do player wherever our enumerator is stored we are going to access that my enumerator is stored in the folder player which is right over here and right over here we can you can look it's certain admin level and then admin none so if the player is not an admin what we will do is we will return nothing like nothing should happen nothing at all however and since there is a return over here nothing from after this line no code will get executed so if the player is an admin this one will not get invoked and the rest of the code will run so what should happen i'll send a notification to the player so player dot send notification and i'll format this you have destroyed the name of the vehicle and then actually destroy the vehicle this is it that is all now i'm going to compile and show it to you in game live how it looks like give me a moment okay as you can see now we are back online in game now i will spawn a vehicle with my native ui if you do not know how to make a native ui i have done a video on this yet again so go back if you want to know how to do this and well you're done all right let's create a vehicle then first let me create something else dominator sure where's my dominator there we go Residing in a mansion waited on by immigrants now I will just press B and as you can see it's written in this notification over here that you have destroyed Dominator and that is how you trigger I mean uh, fetch whatever button a player is inputting and then use that as a trigger to do something in the server side or client side or whatever you want it could be animation it could be some sort of a function a command anything if you have any doubt then comment down below and i'll get to you as soon as possible if you learned anything at all then click that like button like button and if you want more tutorials on c sharp for rage mp then subscribe until the next video peace out